Not too long ago, we told a story about a few hackers that call themselves Xbox Underground, who managed to make a lot of money off of hacking Xbox software, selling bootleg games and cheats to millions before getting caught. This time around, we wanted to see if anything similar had happened to the folks over at Sony. While Sony hasn't had as many incidents as Microsoft, the incidents it did have were far more impactful. Let's take a look at some of these incidents, including the world's largest data breach ever and a scandalous leak where Sony execs were trash-talking famous actors. Why didn't you just go home? That's your home! Are you too good for your home? Answer me! Back in 2011, Sony's PlayStation Network experienced the world's largest data breach, exposing the personal information of 77 million PlayStation users. This story is a doozy, so buckle up. Before we get to the events that happened in 2011, we're going to put our tinfoil hats on and go even further back in time to 2007, where a 17-year-old guy named George Hotz became the first person to successfully unlock an iPhone so that it can be used with any carrier. Hi everyone, I'm Geo High. This is the world's first unlocked iPhone. With that, he started his career in exploitation and hacking. He was, in some small way, the pioneer of jailbreaking iPhones. For those who are curious, he sold that first hacked iPhone to the CEO of a tech company for a Nissan 350Z and three 8GB iPhones. Not a bad deal for a kid who was just pursuing a hobby. Later, as he became more and more notorious for hacking and jailbreaking iPhones, he eventually gave the gig up around 2010, stating he didn't want all of the unwanted attention. While Hot stopped trying to hack iOS devices, he wasn't out of the game completely. Before giving up his iOS jailbreaking days, he had begun working on the Sony PlayStation 3. In fact, in 2009, he announced his intentions to breach the security on the device and allow users to modify the software and play games for free. Five weeks later, in January of 2010, he announced again that he had been successful, claiming that he had access to read and write to the system memory. So far so good, but not great for his idea of minimizing unwanted attention. On January 26, 2010, HOTS released the exploit to the public, allowing people to play illegally downloaded games on their PS3. Sony responded, of course, with a firmware update that would remove the vulnerability. The firmware update was also baked into the PS3 Slim, and further vulnerabilities were patched up. Then, in December of 2010, a notable hacking group called Fail Overflow, who were known for their skill in reverse engineering consumer electronics, picked up where George Hotz left off. They performed an academic presentation at the 27th Chaos Communications Congress, which is a technical conference for cybersecurity, privacy, and online freedom of speech. In their presentation, they showcased the methods they devised for successfully penetrating the device's security model, allowing for access to root signing and encryption keys. These keys are the essential element of a full breach, capable of installing and running any new software or OS on any PS3. In fact, they were even able to install a Linux-based OS in any PS3 device to play all sorts of emulators such as the N64, Sega Dreamcast, and more. This achievement must have piqued Toss's interest, as he posted a copy of the root keys on his website in early January 2011. Probably excited by the achievement of Fail Overflow, he didn't think about the consequences of publicly posting a bunch of hacked keys. By publicly posting these keys, Toss became responsible for the hack and was quickly sued by Sony. During the litigation, Hoss was very vocal about his displeasure with Sony, even recording and publishing a song about the disaster of Sony. Yo, it's Geo High, and for those that don't know, I'm getting sued by Sony. Not taking any of this lightly, Sony demanded social media sites such as YouTube to hand over the IP addresses of people who had watched the video, as well as people who had visited his website. At the end of all of this, Sony and Hotz settled out of court for an unknown amount of money, and the promise that Hotz would never again resume hacking on Sony products. Now, if that were the end of the story, this would make for a pretty boring YouTube video. But fear not, the good stuff is just about to unfold. Four months later, at the end of April 2011, Sony was in the news again. This time though, it was much more than a couple of hackers trying to play games for free. On April 20th, PSN users who logged in were greeted with a message that informed them that the network was undergoing maintenance. Sony also created a blog post saying that it was aware of certain functions of the PSN that were down. The next day, Sony again asked its users to be patient while the cause of the outage was investigated, claiming that it would take a full day or two before the service was functional. Not too long later, they added that it was an external intrusion that affected the PlayStation Network and all of the services would be down worldwide with no guidance on when the service would return. On April 25th, Sony acknowledged that the compromise of personal information as a result of an illegal intrusion had happened. While they were unsure of the extent of the damage, Sony advised that while fixing the issue, they were committed to reworking their security system to prevent things like this from happening in the future. The service remained offline for weeks. Then, on May 1st, Sony announced that their path to bringing the service online was clear and that they would issue a welcome back package for users affected by the outage. All users would get a free month of PSN, access to Music Unlimited for existing subscribers, as well as a host of free games such as Little Big Planet, Infamous, and Killzone Liberation, among others depending on the region. They promised that the services would be online in the first week of May. At this point, everything was purely speculation. 
speculation. Sony was careful to use words like may have or potential breach without confirming anything. Meanwhile, Reuters had begun reporting this as the biggest internet security break-in ever, and they would be right. Sony confirmed on May 4th that it had been the victim of a data breach compromising the personal data of 77 million PlayStation users. They weren't able to confirm whether or not the credit card information had been compromised, but names, email addresses, home addresses, and telephone numbers had all been compromised and were in the hands of unnamed hackers. While missing their initial timeline, they were able to get the service back online in some regions by May 15th, nearly a month after the outage. Sony estimated that the outage cost them $171 million and had still been mostly silent on the damages and the exact cause of the shutdown. As the services started coming back online, Sony had pushed an update that would require every user to change their password upon logging in, as well as advising users to change the password of other services that could be accessed through the PSN, such as Hulu and Netflix. Alongside the games and free subscriptions that Sony offered to their customers, they also promised a credit card insurance of up to $1 million per person, a sign that they were confident that no credit card information had been stolen. Following the event, Sony was faced with a considerable amount of criticism about their lackadaisical approach and slow response time. Sony had answered that it did not want to provide information before it had been verified, and that investigations like these take time, saying that they shut down the services immediately when they learned of the intrusion, but didn't want to say anything about user data until it had been confirmed. Of course, Sony was sued left and right, but only in some cases did they face penalties. In Europe, for example, they were fined 450,000 US dollars, but the case in California was dismissed as it had not breached any of California's consumer protection laws. And according to the judge, there is no such thing as a perfect security system. Now, you may be asking where George Hotz comes into play in all this. Well, it's not confirmed, but he definitely has a motive here. He was sued by Sony for a hack that he had no responsibility for, aside from sharing it. Not only that, but there are numerous records of his displeasure, for lack of a better term, with Sony. Now that the hard part of the hack had been done, who knows what kind of information he had access to. It's not impossible that George and the Fail Overflow Group teamed up to bring Sony to its knees. Hotz is largely believed to be the one person behind the operation, but we have no proof. Hotz did go on record, however, stating that while running homebrew and exploring security on your own devices is cool, hacking into someone else's server and stealing databases of user info is not cool. Almost 10 years later, all we know is that the credit card information of the PSN users who were hacked is safe, but that's about it. What happened with the user information, who was behind the incident, is still a complete mystery. Kinda spooky, isn't it? Aside from this breach, Sony has been pretty good at keeping things secure, especially when it comes to PlayStation. In August of 2017, Sony's Twitter accounts had been compromised by a hacking group called Armine, which confusingly claims to be a security website while calling themselves a group of elite hackers. In any case, they hacked all of Sony's Twitter accounts and started tweeting things like, Sony, please contact us. We have hacked your entire database. They used the hashtag PlayStation Leaks to try to get it trending and had a call to action on their website. Shortly thereafter, Sony regained control of their Twitter accounts and promptly deleted all of the tweets. News sources reached out to both Armine and Sony, with the former responding saying Sony never contacted them. And because they're not a malicious group of hackers, they wouldn't only reveal the leaks to Sony themselves. Sony never answered, and the story quickly got buried in the internet, which means it was most likely a publicity stunt from Armine. It is possible that Sony contacted them at a later date, but there's no reports of any such incident. Other departments from Sony were targeted as well, primarily their film studio. In November of 2014, Sony Studios was hacked. The hackers who claimed to be Anonymous, the internet group that originated on 4chan, had gained access to top secret Sony files, leaking a part partnership between Sony and Marvel for an animated Spider-Man film we now know as Into the Spider-Verse, as well as some emails from execs and employees alike, criticizing movies, actors, and the industry. Allegedly, science point to North Korea being responsible for the hack, as it happened just before the release of The Interview, a comedy movie that's plot revolves around assassinating Kim Jong-un. It would appear that they were using Anonymous as a scapegoat, even using messages such as We Are Legion in their demands. One of the main demands was for Sony to, and I quote, stop immediately showing the movie of terrorism, which can break the regional peace and cause the war. The hackers threatened to launch 9 11 style attacks against American movie theaters that showed the film. This led to most analysts believing that the hack was done by North Korea to save face for their leader. Overall, the fallout from these leaks had two different outcomes. First, it showed the actual profitability of films, which is normally a closely guarded secret, as well as some back and forth emails from execs. In one such instance, one executive called Angelina Jolie a minimally talented spoiled brat. Another described actor Kevin Hart as a whore. Is that right? What a, you didn't you didn't hear it right. Multiple Sony employees bash the formulaic Adam Sandler films the company has produced. Listen, go back to your goddamn pretzel stand. We got it. Yeah! But there's a good chance that any corporation is going to have disgruntled employees as well as smack-talking executives. The second outcome was that the movie theaters began pulling the interview off of screens out of safety, and in the end, the movie only grossed 12.3 million at the box office, which comes in well below the $44 million budget. So in that regard, the stunt did well to blunt the impact of the film, as well as save face for leader Kim Jong-un, although it's not like he has a shining reputation to begin with. Since then, Sony has been great at keeping secrets. In fact, as of recording this video, we still don't know what the PS5 is going to look like. We only just got the design of the controller which we think looks awesome, by the way. Awesome! Yes! 
but it's pretty clear that Sony has taken some strong strides in providing security to their PlayStation users. The world's largest data breach is not a record that any company wants to hold. So with that, we pass the question off to you. Hearing all of this, do you think HOTS was behind the 77 million user breach? Were you around during the PSN outage of 2011? Let us know what you think in the comments, and thanks for watching.